Hi, I'm really glad you're here today. I am excited to share this stuff with you. I'm always excited to share with you the keys, the kingdom keys that God gives me. And today I want to share with you how to start a revival or how to bring about changes in your life uh, through getting into God's presence, through uh, having peace because you're getting into God's presence, and then to walk in God's supernatural presence and power. And it looks like our kitty cat is going to be joining us today in this broadcast. <laughs> um, so we'll just add a little entertainment there. Hopefully she won't knock this off. Now there's several different keys to um, having a supernatural revival, to getting in God's presence, to having peace and having power. And this is perhaps one of my most informative, one of my most important messages that I can give you because without having peace you won't have health, you won't have finances, uh, you won't prosper, you you won't uh, you won't have comfort, you won't have the most important thing that you should have in your life. So you need to get God's peace and the way to get God's peace is to get in His presence and when you do that you'll have everything else. So today we're going to talk about personal revival and taking it to your family, your community and to your church and getting into God's presence having supernatural power and having peace so there's several keys the first key that I want to go over is hunger and hunger is the most important key of all because if you are not hungry if you are not desperate if your heart's cry is not oh God I I don't want anything but your presence. I need you. I, You are the answer to all of my problems, my questions, my fears, everything. If you are not hungry enough, you won't have a revival. You won't get into God's presence. You have to want it. Okay, so hunger is very, very important. Let me share a story with you. I, uh, a couple years ago, was going to a church that had an awesome message and they had great praise and worship, but it was so disappointing because when I looked around, the people were sitting like this. That's how they were sitting in church. They weren't holding up their hands, they weren't worshiping, and they weren't praising. They were just singing along with the song like they would on the radio. And for me, this is so disappointing because uh, when you have a praise and worship band and there's other believers around you, it is so easy and so fun to get in God's presence. And God is so wonderful and so awesome. And to not just lift up your hands and say, Oh God, thank you so much. And just praise His beauty and His awesomeness, if those are words. How, how can you not do that? And, and God gave me a secret or two secrets. The first secret was, he said to me, if you want to make people hungry, you have to eat in front of them. And what he was saying is, if, if you want to make people hungry for God's presence, for God's power, what you have to do is uh, let them experience your experience of praise and worship. Let them see you praising and worshiping and dancing and twirling the flags and twirling ribbons and just praising and worshiping and whatever happens happens because you're just in the moment praising God and so that is a secret is if you want to make other people hungry you need to eat in front of them and the other secret that he told me about getting hungry is if you don't see somebody at church worshiping God I don't care if they say I'm the silent type I don't do that that's that's a lie and they don't even realize it. What they're saying is, if I go to my kid's baseball game, I will stand up and scream. I might even curse at the referee. But I'm not the kind of person that, you know, stands up and shouts. Only at my kid's match. I don't want to do it in church. And so, what they're saying is, they haven't spent time at home personally. Secret number two is, if you don't spend time at home praising and worshiping God and being thankful and just being enamored by his awesomeness when you get in public you're not gonna hold your hands up praise worship and dance either because you haven't done it at home you don't go to church to get a quick fix you have to get into God's presence every day at home and it's possible and I'm gonna show you how 
So, those are two secrets under hunger. Focus. Okay. Focus is all about Him. Okay? It's not about what sins you did do or didn't do or trying not to do. It's about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. So the more information you feed yourself about Jesus, what he did on the cross, what he did for you, how you're supposed to copy him, um, who you are now in him, having the Holy Spirit inside of you, speaking in tongues, um, receiving uh, the everything the Holy Spirit has to offer, everything the blood of Jesus paid for you to have, the more you get focused and study on that, the more you'll have revelation about that and you'll experience that. So focus. Jesus is the focus, not you. Okay. Trust. This is so important. There's so many people, especially now, are, are going around saying, oh, this is a false teacher, That's a, that one's a false teacher, because they, they do signs, wonders, and miracles. They do crazy stuff. They use these weird words and stuff. And, and let me tell you what God told me about that. He said, Satan can only copy the original, the occult is a copy, a bad copy, run by demons, the occult and cults are copies of the original supernatural. He said that the supernatural belongs to you. The supernatural belongs to Christians. It's ours. God is supernatural. And God is our Father. And we have His DNA. We are in His image. So we are supernatural. We should be experiencing the supernatural every day in our lives. And that's exciting news. So, trust. You have to trust the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is given to you as your partner, your helper, your go-along beside you, your teacher, revealer of secrets, a comforter, and everything. You have to trust your teacher. I'm just beginning to do a coaching program and I'm doing a lot of teaching on the website and 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 I'm learning how to partner have partnerships with um, these big companies who I can give them um, content and in return they I bless their people with my content and there in return their people come to my site and so on and so I'm learning how really the importance of partnership and you have to learn to trust the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, when you trust on Him, when you get into the words and study the words, the Holy Spirit will not allow you to be led astray. The supernatural is natural for the Holy Spirit. In heaven, He is called the Drama King because He created the drama. The, all the art forms, painting, dancing, singing, music, all drama, all art forms, he created them. He is very flamboyant. He is very, <laughs> some people might say obnoxious. He's very fun and playful, the Holy Spirit is. And he, he, he's a creator. He creates things. And so you have to trust that the Holy Spirit will not let you go astray. You have to rely on the Holy Spirit to teach you. And then the next thing is initiative. You have to take the initiative. God has given you everything you need for life and godliness. And he's just waiting for you to step out of your comfort zone and to start expecting supernatural encounters, supernatural experiences. He's waiting for you to take that step to trust and to believe. Okay? Okay. Next, what I'm going to talk about is how to get into his presence. And oh, God... I love the presence of the Holy Spirit more than anything in this world. I'm not one that I don't want to die, but you know what? I have the hope that I know that if I die, I am going to a wonderful, wonderful place called heaven. And it's not a place where we float around and we don't have no body. It's a place of fun. Did you know there's roller coasters in heaven? There's uh, Christmas towns in heaven. There are um, movies that you become the movie stars in heaven. Don't look at me and go, eh, she's just crazy. Listen to this. Think about this, okay? Everything on earth is a copy of what's in heaven. God is the original creator. If you think in man who is, has God's DNA, who is God's child, created roller coasters to have fun, 
or created uh, Christmas uh, lights and and all the stuff to celebrate Christmas we're created in our father's image do you think we can be so prideful as to say that it was my thought I created that no God created it and I have a friend her name is Kat Kerr K-A-T-K-E-R-R -R. and God has taken her to heaven for 10 maybe 20 years thousands of times and her mission given to her by God is when God takes her God takes her to heaven and shows her around heaven she experiences heaven she comes back she has people draw illustrations about it and she comes back and she tells about it and speaking of that if you go to my website robinbremer.net and you sign up uh, to receive my newsletter and uh, all the other things I have to offer you will receive a free calendar that I created with Kat Kerr's pictures of heaven angels angels in the cloud formations um, and every month there's a different picture that she tells about what it's like in heaven from that picture and there's a story that goes with it about heaven and it is so awesome you're gonna want it and along with that I'm gonna give you some other gifts and one of those things is this um, DVD or CD mp3 that you're listening to right now is one of those gifts so you might have already gotten that calendar because this is probably the second gift uh, when you opt in because I want to do overkill I want to give you more than you expect I want to bless you I want to make you hungry for the supernatural things of God now to get into God's presence there's a couple of keys and these are I call these kingdom keys and um, well basically this is how I learned this process 20 years ago when my children 22 years ago when my children were about 24 um, I was really hungry for God's presence I was not satisfied uh, with life I was living the same life as every other Christian in the world this having the same problems um, I might have been a better person as far as my behavior goes but that's it nobody could tell I was a Christian there was nothing supernatural about me and as a child I always laid on the hill in our countryside and I would look up at the stars and I'd see all the stars and somewhere at some point in time I got a hold of the scripture that says that God throws out this threw out the stars from the palm of his hands into the skies and he knows them all by name and that's the only scripture I really knew and that scripture somebody gave it to me and it touched my heart and I would lay out and I'd say God you're so awesome you are so beautiful I want to know more about you I give my life to you whoever you are that's all I knew and then I gave my life to the Lord um, I said that when I was 13 and I actually found out about Jesus that in order to get saved what you do is you receive Jesus who paid the price for all of our lifetime of sins and you ask him to come you know live in your heart be your Lord and thank him for forgiving all your sins and so I did that 35 years ago uh, but when I was 13 even at 13 I recognized that there was a God out there and that God has always made me thankful and joyful and so um, the way that I learned about this is I had Jesus in my heart but I had an everyday life like everyone else so I learned I received speaking in tongues I was I wasn't taught about speaking in tongues I just received it one night I woke up in the middle of the night praying in tongues I just woke up talking in a foreign language in my sleep and I go whoa this is cool this is tongues and I knew what it was right away and and so that's how I received tongues in the middle of the night woken up speaking in tongues and so I did have that so I just began to go into my prayer closet while my kids were napping and my prayer closet was really a closet with shoes and clothing in and I like small confined spaces because I, I just feel so much closer to God when I pray in fact I cover myself with a, a piece of cloth because it's like I'm in there with my daddy and nobody can touch me I'm I'm on his lap and it's so private and I love covering myself uh, with a prayer cloth or a cloth when I pray I'm I'm believing God one of these days to have one of the Jewish prayer cloths you know that they wear uh, authentic one from Israel oh I'd love to have that um, anyway so I would go in my prayer closet and I would pray and I would spend hours singing and praying in tongues and worshiping and this is how some of these keys came about now the first one is thankful 
one of the keys to getting into God's presence and, and for some people, when you first start, it's really hard because you have all these outside influences that have talked to your brain and given you a certain mindset. So when you listen to TV, the radio, the newspaper, uh, gossip at work, and everything else going on in the world, the fear and news and all that, that, that embeds in your heart and in your thinking. And so you got to get rid of that because all these voices are talking to you, all these advertisements and stuff are talking to you. And you're not hearing God's voice because it's drowned it out. So, one of the key things that I learned, and this is so important, all these keys are really life-changing keys. Uh, one of the things I learned is thankfulness. Take a piece of paper and a pen and just start writing down everything you're thankful. Father, I'm thankful that I'm alive. I'm thankful that I'm healthy. I'm thankful that I can walk and talk and see. I'm thankful that my kids are okay and they're, they're, they're good kids and I'm thankful that I have shoes. I'm thankful I live in a country that is still free. I thank you, Father, that I can still meet at church. I thank you that I have a church that believes in the supernatural things of God. I thank you that I have an awesome marriage. I thank you that my husband is a good communicator. I thank you that the electric didn't go out during the, electric, the snowstorm we just had. And just make a list and it will probably go on for quite a while. And whenever you think of it, add more to that list okay then when you go into your prayer closet uh, or you just get in a private place in prayer pray you just pull out that list and you just start saying oh god I'm so thankful for this and I am thankful for it you just tell him what you're thankful for and that will like kick off a whole bunch of stuff he will just be there and you will get into his presence that way it's a really great tool the other thing is music about him one of the things I like to do is I like to listen to Jewish music praising God. There's something about the majesticness of Jewish music. They see the kingliness, the majesticness, the um, royalty of God more than anybody else. And I just love the royalty of God and I love gemstones and colors and remind me later to tell you a story about that or probably be in, one, in my next book. But um, about the Jewish music I don't know what they're saying so what I do here's a really cool fun thing I sing in tongues so they're singing in Jew in the Jewish language that I don't understand so I'm singing Shanda Raku Mahala Kasila La La Kalola Ma Parayata that's the only Jewish tune I know off the top of my head and as you can see I can't sing but I can make a joyful noise so what I do is I put on some Jewish praise music and I sing in tongues to the Jewish praise music. The other thing I'd listen to is Jason Upton has a really, really awesome song called Fly. And in this song, angels sang with him and they sing really high. I've had several experiences. I've sang with angels in heaven. I, I've sang with angels uh, during worship sometimes. And they have a really, really high voice, and it's, it and it sounds like a choir. It's just re it's really beautiful. And on Jason Upton's um, song "Fly," the, you can hear the angels singing. They taped it, and, and and go listen to the actual story. I don't want to go over here, but the guy got so scared that he went under the table and hid from the angel because he saw. I think he saw the angel. Uh, but go listen to that story. Anyway, so listen to music about him, uh, maybe Jewish music, maybe fly, maybe whatever it is that turns you on to really experiencing God's presence, singing in tongues. Uh, and one of the other things I did was I took a Rodney Howard Brown has some videos on uh, YouTube. And I took some, I, I taped some of his music when they were praying in tongues, they were singing in tongues for about 20 minutes and it was really, really beautiful. So I taped the group singing in tongues for 10 minutes and then I just relooped it so it was like 20 minutes long and I will sing in tongues with them and that's a really cool way to do that. The other thing is, well, I take scriptures, this is, this is a, another key that really worked for me on thankfulness, um, sort of thankfulness. I took scriptures, I went through the book of Psalms, and I found all of the phrases or wording that I really liked. For example, I looked at maybe, uh, excuse me, like one of the Psalms, maybe Psalms 28, I don't know. And maybe it said, 
like one of my key phrases that I picked out of that in the New King James Version is, um, well, let me say uh, Psalm 64. Uh, I hunger and I thirst for your presence where there is no water, uh, but I will be satisfied because I will see your power in the church or something like that. And I, I take things like that. It's like a little prayer, like a little thankfulness, and I write it down. And then I go look for something else. And one of my favorite ones, uh, wording that I found in Psalms is, um, I will be, I will be uh, thankful when I'm, I'm hidden from the danger in your presence or something like that. And so I found all these key words and phrases that really touched my heart, that really expressed who I was. And I wrote them down. And then I would go into my prayer closet or walk back and forth on, on the catwalk here. And I would just say, oh, God, you are my shelter. You are my high tower. Oh, God, I worship you. I hunger and I thirst for righteousness. Oh, Father, I thirst for your presence. Nothing satisfies me like the presence of the Lord. And those are all scriptures the one sentence in in different scriptures and I would say that I can even feel God's presence right now while I'm doing that <laughs> because God's Word is his presence and and I would feel an amplified version of his presence it would become more and more powerful and so taking scriptures and especially in the book of Psalms that touch your heart that reveal how you feel about God or the Holy Spirit and make a little booklet in fact that's how one of my booklets started that I have for sale it's called kingdom confessions okay now the next step is meditating in the word and oh my uh, this is this is what I do when I want to know more about God I meditate in this word oh he is so much fun do you know God does not shut up God is a chatterbox he's worse than me he talks and talks and talks all the time it's just that we're not tuned in we're not listening and he is a chatterbox and one of the ways that I get God to talk the most is by meditating on his word I will take scriptures that mean something to me like um, let's see <clears throat> one of the ones is uh, see now, now I should have wrote I should have wrote something down uh, let me see one of my favorite scriptures is that we are to force enforce everything that is accomplished on the cross through Christ Jesus um, and it's Ephesians 3 I believe anyway I would meditate on the scripture or let's take this one the kingdom of God is righteousness peace and joy and I would meditate on the scripture I go for a walk or I just think while I'm doing dishes or say okay the kingdom of God the kingdom the kingdom okay what is a kingdom a kingdom is a government an enforcing agency and in the kingdom there's a king and a king has dominion okay God what else and then he'd say, the kingdom of God is righteousness. Okay, what is righteousness? Okay, righteousness. And then he'd begin to put scriptures together and talk to me about righteousness. Okay, righteousness is Jesus became your sin so you could become his righteousness. You're in right standing with God. Uh, you're never going to get out of right standing because you're in Christ Jesus. So the kingdom of God means that you're in right standing with God. Righteousness means you're right with God. Okay, so what is right with God? Sickness is not right with God. So healing is right poverty is not right with God so so then prosperity is right with God so anything that is not right with God the kingdom is there to change so I would begin to meditate on the word and that's another way to get in God's presence meditating that way then the other way is soaking and soaking is when you take music that worships God and you just lay down and I kind of do this at night. And let me tell you what God says. He is so much fun. Um, you just listen to praise and worship music. And you just lay comfortably. And you just kind of think of God. Think of what the music is saying. Think of how awesome he is. And he will begin to show you things. Take you in the spirit places and show you things. Well, one of the things that he's done with me for months. And I love it when he does it. Is he started off by showing me color combinations. I would be just going to sleep at night and I probably wasn't even thinking of the Lord he just did this by his own will he started call and I don't know why he shows me colors but he started showing me colors uh, well I probably do because I, I really have an attraction to gemstones I just think they're so fascinating in fact I'm believing someday I'm going to own a precious gemstone mine and I want to go into it and I just want to see the process happening and I want to find gemstones myself but I'm going to someday have a precious stone mine a gemstone mine 
and it's going to have beautiful stones and it's going to bring in so many finances into the kingdom of God and I prophesied that to myself right now but he would show me gemstones he would show me combinations of gemstones and what he was showing me was color he was showing me color from heaven he was showing me the color of gemstones in heaven and it, the colors would come really fast and they were so absolutely gorgeously beautiful that they would actually take my breath away I go <gasps> when I saw them, I go because <gasps> they were so absolutely beauty beautiful they were colors that I've never seen on earth they were color combinations that I've never seen on earth so he started showing me that I go to sleep and maybe have a half an hour of seeing these colors and he do that every night for weeks and weeks and then he started showing me uh, gowns like a bridal gown and with um, stones and pearls embroidered into them and those gowns were absolutely beautiful I've never seen anything like them on on earth I mean they're, they're just like stunning and I assume that those are bridal gowns and then the next thing he started showing me was he started showing me color combinations of jewelry not just gemstones but the gemstones in the jewelry and again it was like oh, I want one of them it's so beautiful and so that's what happens with soaking he will take you places now one thing I want to remind you of the supernatural is natural for Christians we are God's kids we were created to walk in the supernatural the occult has stolen from the Christian what belongs to the Christian so don't be afraid to trust so on the other paper there trust the Holy Spirit to lie to guide you do uh, test every spirit uh, if you have angels come and talk to you um, test every spirit by making sure uh, do you believe that Jesus came to live on the earth in the flesh the Son of God Jesus came to earth to live in the flesh and lived in the flesh okay that's the test and if they don't say that you know then don't trust them okay it's nothing to be afraid of the more you get to know Jesus the more you get to know the Holy Spirit and God the less afraid you will be and the more dominion and authority you will take over everything that you were created to have dominion over okay soaking study and listen to someone else's experience for example you're listening to some of my experiences and that will motivate you and build your faith to have your own experiences well don't just listen to my experiences and by the way in all my books I have supernatural experiences encounters but I'm coming out with a new book and by the time you get this it might already be out it's called having fun with the Holy Spirit and it's probably gonna be one of my favorite books right now my favorite book is volume number two kingdom justice and liberty for all because that talks about the supernatural and it talks about grace and you can't get into understanding and feeling free and flowing in the supernatural things of God until you totally 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 understand grace so get that book that's volume number two okay so uh, I would suggest that you get on the internet types kingdom of God supernatural and keywords like that glory glory fire and <coughs> excuse me you get into some of their teachings uh, their experiences and so on uh, some of the people that um, if you go to my website I will have links of people that I recommend not my partners page my partners are people who pay to advertise on my page but on well, you can look at them too but uh, if you want to learn about supernatural experiences and things of God and what's happening around the world then go to my website and click on the link that talks about links that I would recommend okay now <clears throat> what I said before this is so important if you want to if you want to have the ability to lay hands on people at church have them healed, have them get slain in the spirit, um, get filled with the Holy Spirit, just uh, grow out legs. Oh God, that is so much fun. I love to grow out people's legs and arms. And what that really is doing is realigning their body. But you can physically see it happening. You can film it. I have two films of growing out people's legs supernaturally uh, on my YouTube account, Feed My People Joy. But like I'm saying here if you don't spend time at home and doing all these things and getting in God's presence it becomes easier and easier and, and you develop your favorite ways and your instant ways of getting into God's presence and walking in the supernatural but if you don't develop it at home you're not going to have it in public so what uh, let me see right here um, you do it at home and then you will have before you go out and then you will have it this is praise and worship freely 
When you start praising and worshiping God freely, that's when you'll begin healing the sick, casting out demons, and raising the dead. I've tried to raise the dead seven times. Uh, it hasn't happened yet. It's been prophesied over me that it would happen, and it should happen because Jesus said, heal the sick, cast out demons, cleanse the lepers, preach the gospel to the poor, and raise the dead. All one sentence. No extra qualification, no super hyper faith, just believing in Jesus and just doing what he did and having the Holy Spirit. Now, your level of commitment will determine your level of success. How desperate are you? How hungry are you? What are you willing to give up? And this is very important. And this is what I did about seven years ago. That changed my life. And what level do you want to go to? About seven years ago, my church had a fast for 30 days. And I decided to fast TV. Because I had become a very fearful person. The, they had just developed the terrorist levels. And it would go up to orange every other day. And I'd get in fear. And then I'd listen to the news. And I'd get in fear. And I'd have to go do this. And I'd have to do that. And I'd be like so fearful. And so I fasted TV for 30 days. And I never went back. I won't even allow TV to come in our house. What we have is a big screen TV, a DVD player, and an old-fashioned video player. And we get Netflix uh, once in a while. We watch Netflix once in a while, and we also uh, do Redbox. And there's no nasty commercials on there. There's no other stuff. We can turn it off. And God does tell me often to turn off some movies that I'm trying to watch. And it's just not worth it. Uh, allowing the devil to condemn me and to harass me by watching those things. So I turn them off very quickly because I've learned, I've shared some of my experiences as you go along. And, I, uh, you know, I'm going to have a subscription, um, a monthly subscription where you pay a certain, a, a set amount, and I'll be sending you a DVD every month. And I'll be talking about these supernatural experiences and encounters. And I'll be sharing with you some of the demons that came from some movies uh, that I start to watch. And I'll share the good, the bad, and the ugly with you. But let's get back to this. Radio. You know what? I can't even watch Christian radio. I can't even listen to Christian radio most of the time. You know why? Because there are so many preachers on there today that teach you that <clears throat> one sin, one mess up, and you're on your way to hell. And the person's in condemnation, fear, guilt, and shame, and continues sinning, continues the cycle, and has no peace, no, no relationship with Jesus Christ because they feel not worthy. And that's something else I teach about. But the radio has so many bad preachers on there that God does not even allow me to listen to them. He only allows me to listen to certain preachers for certain periods of time, depending on what he's teaching me, but he pretty much makes me get the information from him, not from anyone else. And just spending time in his presence and studying his word. So, you, a lot of people say, hey, you can listen to any preacher you want, you know, chew, chew up and chew it up and then spit out, stick out the spit, <laughs> spit out the sticks. Well, I say some people can choke on the steps, sticks. And I say, I got too much to, to do with the Lord. I don't want to waste my time listening to a preacher that I just want to scream at the TV and say, no, 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 you're doing this. Look at what you're doing to the people. I don't like that. So I don't listen to the radio. So how hungry are you to decide what to listen to and what not to listen to? Newspaper, magazines, oh man, at Facebook. They are time stealers. TV, time stealers. How willing are you to put them down? God, the supernatural things of God are so much more important than anything you can get in that. Speaking of that, God told me uh, something. He said, people who are gamers, who play games all day long, and you've heard of these people who have died playing games, and they won't go to the bathroom. They'll pee in a cup. And people that have been... Um, they won't get up and go to the bathroom, but they'll pee in a cup. They won't eat because they're so involved in playing a, a video game. And some of them have even died and been fused to their chairs and stuff because they're so into their game. Well, he said that the gamers are people who are really hungry for the supernatural things of God, but they've been misguided. They're replacing the supernatural things of God with playing a game. So if you're a gamer, that's a clue, heads up. Look for the supernatural things of God instead. And a lot of the churches aren't walking in the supernatural, so 
uh, they look for the supernatural in other ways. Okay, newspaper. All newspaper does is tell you the devil's news, pretty much so. It prophesies to you what you can expect, how to get into fear. Same thing with TV, commercials. Okay, it's flu season now. You're going to get flu, and this is the symptoms you look for. Achoo, uh-oh, I got a symptom. Let's see, um, symptom, uh, let's see, this, this. Now, that symptom, it might be the flu. You know, don't accept it, okay? I hate TV with a passion beat because it tells me when to get sick, uh, what time of the year to get sick, what sickness to have, what pills to take, what symptoms to look at, and what horrible after effects these pills cause, uh, cause in my body. I can't stand it. I'm sorry. I, I just so much love and have so much passion for the things of God that I don't want to waste my time. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Friends, are you willing to lose some of your friends that might say you're crazy? when you walk in the things of the supernatural, when you spend time focusing on the supernatural, when you won't let them come to your hospital bed because you have a sickness and you're dying of cancer and they're going to come in and feel sorry for you. Instead, you're going to kick them out. You're going to get a tape player or a DVD player or something and put it in your ear and listen to the Word of God, how He has healed you already, how you receive it, how to be thankful, how to take from the devil what God gave to you. Okay, Your friends, are you going to freak out at the next weird thing that takes God out of the box that you put him in. Be willing to freak out. You're going to freak out about the things God does. Freaking out is okay. But don't say, oh my God, this is a false prophet. They have gold coming out of their hands. Or oil or gems dropping from the, their house. In their house and they praise and worship. Or this. Or they have gold tooth. Or they're losing weight. Oh, God would never do that. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Don't say that ask the holy spirit to show it to you in the word god does not fit in a box you got to remember one thing about god he created all of this so if you can imagine it in your head it's already been done by god god put that in your head so if you can imagine these rappers these rappers hey man you know what you doing man you know these rappers they got gold tooth well who do you think gave them the idea of getting gold teeth god okay so if you can imagine it in your head and God's doing it but you think it's not God, it's a false prophet, think again. Pray about it because God is awesome. He doesn't fit in a box. He's a lot more fun and he's a lot bigger than what you think he is. Okay, and news. Now, like I said, news uh, feeds you prophecy, self-filling prophecy sometimes. It feeds you fear. It feeds you no peace. It, it's, um, I don't know what ready wrong means. And and it sort of imparts fear to you. Okay, now here are keys. <coughs> here are just two keys that are really, really important uh, to dominate to dominate what and how you say. And the first key is, I wish I would have wrote this out because I have to think what I'm talking about here. Oh, I know. Okay, these are keys to keep you safe and protected from... Uh, the occult and wrong things. Number one, the Word of God. Now, everything isn't going to be in the Word of God, but the principle is going to be there, okay? The Bible even says that Jesus did many other things that aren't even written in the book, but they couldn't even fill up all the books in the world. So, let your imagination run wild. Always test it with the principle of the Word. Test it with God's nature. So, this should be Word and Okay, wait. So always test it with the principle of God's word and always test it with God directing toward the blood of Jesus. The Holy Spirit and God will always point toward Jesus. We'll always talk about the blood of Jesus, okay? So just two important concepts and things uh, to keep in mind. The blood of Jesus will always keep you safe. The blood of Jesus will, uh, uh, will always reveal love to you and you are always family so just know that so that's the end of this uh, video sharing and my name is Robin Bremer I hope that I've eaten in front of you and made you hungry for the things of God I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed sharing with you and um, do me a favor if you like what I teach share it with your friends get your friends to come in and uh, sign up 
opt in and sign up for uh, getting these free three teaching tools. The, uh, one is the calendar about the supernatural pictures and angels in the sky and so on. And the other one is this uh, video, which they'll get either if they want an MP4 or a video uh, of how to get into God's supernatural presence and power, how to have revival and peace. And the third one is going to be <clears throat> my newest book that uh, was just published yesterday, which is Words, Use Your Words. And uh, that will be the third gift that I'd like to give away for, for you for just signing up. And um, I'd like to remind you that I will be opening up in the next couple of months. This is now uh, January 2014. And I will be opening up in the next couple months a monthly subscription. And in that subscription, I'd love for you to sign up. It's going to be about $64, somewhere around there. And what you get for $64 is once a month, I will send you a DVD like this with in-depth instructions and teaching like how to heal the sick, in-depth practical knowledge, how to raise the dead, how to experience the supernatural, some of my experiences. And then once a month, we will have a, um, a hangout on Google where you can listen I'm not uh, on your phone or on your computer and you can be part of the panel uh, up to 10 people uh, at a time 10 on the panel and you can I'll be sharing a teaching and you can help me decide what teaching it is what it is you want me to share and teach and you come onto that panel and uh, you get into that hangout and we will talk about uh, whatever subject it, you have questions about that you want to grow on. I'll also be sharing keys how to help your business and your ministry prosper through learning kingdom keys, managing families and relationships and so on. So I'll be doing the subscription. I'll also, uh, I already have uh, and in the process of putting together a DVD series for home Bible, home Bible study course. I already have three Bible studies and I'm doing the DVDs and mp3s and so on and so I'm putting a package together that has some really super content <clears throat> that I'm offering and I'll be also offering some seminars later on in the year where you can fly in drive in or whatever and we do a live seminar on some of these things so <clears throat> and some of my books will be turning into audio audio books very shortly so we're in the process of upgrading as the finances come in and I just I have a video or two a day to do for the next couple of months which is exciting and I'm so so glad that you've joined us and and check out my website and check out the different things I have to offer please share this with your friends uh, share I'm on Facebook uh, I have a group called experience the Bible and also kingdom keys a page called kingdom keys with Robin Bremer and um, Robin Bremer um, you can Facebook friend me on there and on Twitter I'm called feed my people joy and so faith I'm also on LinkedIn so Facebook friend me Twitter friend me <laughs> and uh, go to YouTube uh, I also have uh, Robin Bremer on YouTube and check it out share it with your friends spread the word and I will talk to you again and let me pray for you real quick before I leave father in Jesus name I just pray for all my friends Father, I pray that you would open up their eyes to the knowledge of you and your will in their life, Father, that you would show them how to walk in your supernatural presence, your supernatural power. Show them how good they are, how, how good you are and how much you love them personally, Father. And I pray for their finances to, to come in abundantly so they can do everything that they're called to do. I pray for their ministries and their businesses and their marriages and their family. I speak salvation over their whole family. And thank you, Father, that you just show them how good you are. In Jesus' name, amen.